And Ellie, why are you obsessed with Isabella Rossellini in Death Becomes Her? Because she's like really sexy and like evil and she has this magic potion and I think she's a bit of a lesbian. Why? But is it a good movie? I really enjoyed it. I watched it when I was really young and I was just like, oh my God, this is quite sexual. It was like the first time I watched Happy Days and I saw the fonts and I felt this weird feeling like between my legs and I was like, mom, what is that? And that was like my sexual awakening. Have you tried the orange soda? It's really good. Do you see her nipples in that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you really well? Yeah. Have you ever seen it? Uh, I've seen a bit of stuff. It. I've seen bits of it. It just looks boring. It doesn't look very good. I, I haven't it seen it. It looks okay. I haven't seen it for years, but I did really enjoy it. It's quite funny. That was 1992's Death Becomes Her, directed by Robert Zemeckis, which at the time, the pairing of Goldie Horn, Bruce Willis, who was r- well in the middle of his action kind of, I guess, forte. Forte! Uh, forte, mate. <laughs> uh... And uh, Meryl Streep, it was famous because of the, uh, I guess, the groundbreaking special effects. A full year before Jurassic Park. Obviously, they didn't recreate dinosaurs, <laughs> but they did make Meryl Streep's cans look amazing. Hi, I'm Ethan McKinley, and welcome to the Two Minute Terminator. Plus, we- can I just say, you do see Isabella Rossellini nude in it. Right, stop the show. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, episode 47, and we're going from minutes 94 to 96. The two minutes bridging that gap. And it opens with uh, J.K. Simmons going, just go and don't look back. Sorry, that's a lie. I'm looking at the clip now and J.K. Simmons is on and I've just got a little brain fart. It starts with Amelia Clark tracing her finger down the oh, palm yeah. down the palm of the young John Connor. Down the shaft of the young John Connor. Uh, and it ends, of course, with the pops firing at Jason Clark's John Connor. Uh, Jason Clark, actually we can... Spalder can cover this. I'm gonna, I was going to tell you what guns they fire at each other, but uh, we'll obviously get to that. Uh, Ellie. Hit the music. There's a better in these boots. Yeah, I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six pack. Howdy, stranger. Don't say howdy, stranger, to me. Load up. You didn't do the fourth. Thank God. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Sorry, I will put my phone down. I do keep looking at it's about Ross Newton's boobs. That's right, we are back. It is Two Minute Terminator. We break down the Terminator films two minutes at a time. We're in the middle of Christmas week and we are getting out of show every single day. I <laughs> hope you like it. Uh, Ellie, welcome to the show. How are you again? It's lovely to see you in person. It's great. It's great to see you as well. And you smell terrific. Thank you. What do I smell of? Just success. Manly musk. Ah. Ah. Who are the captain? Says you smells okay. Well, I'm actually drinking uh, on tonight's show. It was Death Coke juice. yesterday. Uh, it's a a giant 250 gram bag of spinach, a handful of blueberries, and a banana, and it tastes horrific. However. The energy and good feeling you get from drinking something like this, Ellie, is good. And I think with someone with such a kind of a prettiness, but it's a common prettiness, you would do well to benefit from this. Quote Sophie. Okay, cool. So. Actually, it's a quote from hell. But it's cleverness. From hell is in the um, The Alan Moore Johnny comic De- that became the film directed by the Hughes brothers, who were, I think they did... Uh, what are they, they two black uh, brothers from South Century started making like gangland pictures and then they got the job doing From Hell. They did a re- really good job, actually. Oh. Uh, but, yeah, when they talk about Johnny Depp, he's like, yes, he's clever, but it's a, it's a, it's a common intelligence. It's not, uh, he's not an educated man because they're all like evil Freemasons, aren't they? I take it back, Ellie. You're lovely. You're a, you're a wonderful co-host and, and, and woman. I definitely would benefit from those drinks, but they do taste of death and despair. You have to get over that hump. Yeah, but Ethan, going. I've already got a weird thing with food and taste and Could it be a nugget of pure green? Um, I used to drink these juices, but um, I would put vegetables and fruit in them, and Ethan was like, you're just drinking sugar. So I stopped. I put vegetable and fruit in this. It takes the edge off. Try this tonight, because tonight... There's spinach in it. I can't do it. Last night was just spinach. This I is can a, eat spinach. I went and bought a banana and I've it. got blueberries. Okay, but can I drink it after the show? Because I might throw up. We'll do a segment later in the show where you try, try it. 
God. Don't right, let so me... <laughs> what, are the, what are the bookmarks of this particular two minutes? Uh, the bookmarks, again, just to recap, uh, are Amelia Clark, Sarah Connor, tracing her finger down uh, the young John Connor's finger. Sorry, the uh, Jung Joy Courtney. The young... Jung, Co- young Jung? George Jung, the yeah. uh, famous drug dealer. Or is he... That's Carl Jung, isn't it? With one of the other. You and Jung. Johnny Depp played him as well. Anyway, Blow, 2002. Get on, get on it. Uh, <laughs> the director of that, actually, Ted Demi, died in a cocaine overdose in a hotel. Do you know that? The direc- no. The director of Blow. Who else had a cocaine addiction that recently died? Carrie Fisher. <gasps> oh, shit, yeah. And we didn't who mention, died today? We didn't mention Carrie Fisher. We did uh, mention Carrie Fisher. Princess Leia herself, the day... We, well, did you think the end scene of Rogue One was posthumously weird because she now looked, she's gone? She looked weird. I know she's CGI'd. Well, th- when they had her speaking, they should have just hit, said her had that did her lines off camera I think but we digress but yeah oh, Carrie Fisher get, died we didn't get me any laces and then the next day uh, Debbie Reynolds died her mother famous of course for dancing with Gene Kelly with, in uh, Singing in the Rain and, I'm uh, singing uh, in the rain Eddie Fisher and was the product of Hollywood royalty never thought she was hot her book Postcards from the Edge apparently is a very good book and she details her affair with Harrison Ford on the set of Star Ooh, Wars and yeah. she's quite witty and stuff but anyway, yeah, the book ends of this scene. Amelia Clark, of course, playing uh, Ellie's least favourite version of the character, Sarah Connor. Yep. Even we say that with confidence, even though we've not seen the Sarah Connor Chronicles TV show yet. I just really dislike Amelia Clark. Uh, tracing her finger down uh, young Carl Reese's hand, saying, just go, you don't look back. And ends with Pops firing one off into the face of uh, <laughs> Jason Clark's uh, John Connor. Uh, so those are the bookends, basically. You did that on purpose. There's some nice comic relief from J.K. Simmons uh, throughout the scene. Uh, there's actually a kind of a homage of sorts as we come to the weapons cache again. Again, in Your an empty walls police... Your really cool. My balls. Your walls. Oh, Just I know. There's damp in the walls. Fucking hell, dude. That's not good. If you look in the corner... This is why I had all the furniture on wheels. Is this why your nose is so... Probably, yeah. You're probably just breathing in really bad spores. Spores. Although we did do a ton of blow a couple of nights back and then Viagra. But we'll get to that. No, Ethan did Viagra. I, I, do, I do it to work did, out. Because if you have your blood pressure low while you work out, I did it keeps some blow the blood. and then we took some Valium. But I hasten to add I didn't do any Viagra. No. I'm wet and good to go. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank God we're just friends, are we? Anyway, on with the show. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought to myself, if I was that kid... And some chick just got down on her <laughs> knee and started like tracing her <laughs> finger down my palm. I'd think, what the hell is going on? You'd be so weirded out, wouldn't you? You would. Let Who is just... this chick? Hang on a second. Let me just get a look at her chebs before I run back down the stairs. Well, it's Amelia, so he probably wouldn't think that. Yeah, but he's a young boy. He's probably only ever seen his mums. Well, maybe not. I don't think I've seen my mums. You've definitely seen my mums. Um... Yes, and also the way that she does it, it's almost like a maternal thing. Because if you think about it, it was her father that did that to her. Well, it is a kind and of maternal she's thing. She's the but mother she character. But him. It's a bit. That's elect- Kyle. It's a bit Electra. It's a bit weird. Not the comic book, uneducated listeners. Electra complex is the opposite of the Oedipus complex, where you uh, indulge yourself in a relationship with your mother. Yeah. Um, <coughs> see, I thought that was a bit weird. It's, it's like you're going to shag him later. Yeah, it is a bit strange, it's isn't bit, it? It's, it's, it's just a bit of a maternal moment. Uh, well, c- I can't find Kyle, actually, on the IMDb list. And also, when he actually does go down the stairs and he sh- uh, with his mum and dad, he does. He shoots this look back up at Sarah, and it's almost like he knows. It's like his spidey senses are tingling. Well, no, because... He's it's just, l- he just looks and goes, it's like in uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Russell Brad. I'm going to fuck her later. <laughs> I showed the ass made last week. No, 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 it's the driver. You see my driver? Yeah. I'm going to fuck her, aren't you? When did you say that? At the very end of the film. Oh, when Sarah he's, Marshall. When he's leaving, Never yeah. seen it. <gasps> Ethan, you'd love that film. I've seen bits of it. and Dracula I lo- musical! I love getting to the Greek, but I just can't... Yeah. For, dude, Forgetting Sarah Marshall is a great film. If is you it? if you can watch Get Him to the Greek, Get Him to the Greek is not as good. Believe me. Really? Going to yep. the Greek is the sequel to Sarah Marshall of sorts. It's but uh, Sarah Marshall is funnier. Whoa. Yeah. Strong words. Trust me, brother. Straight the fairy walls. Yeah, I know. It's good. Don't get me wrong. And I would definitely smoke a Jeffrey if someone gave me one. <laughs> would you? No, because I don't smoke. Oh, Ethan, you're looking out there. Um, anyway, so we then go to uh, Sarah, Kyle, and the guy whose name I always forget 
Um, and they've gone, what is this, like the armory? It is. My only question with this is... Why would there be no one in there? Why, would why the, is there no why CCTV? Is there no one in, well, it's the evidence locker room, isn't it? But more to the point, why is the entire building empty? I, right, this is my point. There's no CCTV. There's no security. This is just open willy-nilly for anyone to just walk it. There's like been an attack in an are. interview room. Two yeah. cops have been shot dead. One's been injured. And, One's a robot. And I hasten to add two of them have just like come from like an electronic... like ball of nothing that landed in the middle of the motorway. Found him. Young uh, Brian Price she's, is the actor playing She's completely off the grid. Kyle is claiming to be Kyle Reese when actually he's an 11 year old boy. <laughs> and yet they're just letting these guys... I, I don't know. Very bizarre. What do you mean it's crap? There's 18 bodies at the end. He gets to shag his mum. Oh, that, actually, that's very true. That's Shakespeare. <laughs> and referring, of course, to Hamlet. God, we're really uh, taking off the PG... Uh, Oh, it's Christmas. Rating on this it's one, Christmas. aren't we? I think we've had about four or five Fs. <laughs> we've got incest. Ooh, my the incest show. one was yesterday. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I thought it was a bit weird that there was no kind of CCTV, no security, not even any policemen in there just guarding the uh, the goods. Uh, and then all of a sudden the door gets ripped off or blasted in or whatever you want to say and uh, Pops is back and the look on Sarah's face is the only look that a girl can give when her father comes home. Which is what? Relief, like safety, happiness, enlightenment, <laughs> elation. And that I think that might give a reason as to why Kyle has this gripe with Pops. I think he wants to he wants Sarah to look at him the way Sarah looks at Pops. But I'm telling you this now, Jai, no man will come between her a girl and her daddy. Yeah. Unless her dad's a, like I don't know, an evil serial killer who's been imprisoned. Your bizarre fetish for your father still fascinates me. I haven't got a dad listeners by the way, he left when I was five, so I don't have the understand this kind of like family dynamic that Ellie has. Like he thinks her parents are awesome and I do. Well, my mother's awesome to a degree. <laughs> uh, my father, not so much. But, uh, yeah. He had his part to play. He had his part to play. He, he created me. To be fair... He zeroed an egg. A lot of the he things, balls on a womp rat from 500 feet. Apart from having loads of kids in lots of different countries, he doesn't sound too dissimilar to you. He was a bit of a cad. Yeah. Lo loved women. Uh, yeah. Whenever he had money, he'd just fucking blow it on drugs and women. That was an old me, but yeah, I grew out of that Ethan, phase. if you've got a shitload of money now, what would you blow it on? Women, I think. Yeah. I'd be healthy, but... St I'd, yeah, be <laughs> I'd, like my I'd father, be healthy. I'd like my father, I'd no, pull you out. wouldn't. You'd, you'd buy pure cocaine, and you'd just party all the time, party <laughs> all the time, party. Ethan, how young and gorgeous you look now, you'd be dead within five years. You'd look great in your coffin, though. Definitely an open coffin for you. <laughs> Which part would be open, below the waist or above? Your zip. <laughs> It's an open casket and everyone Guys, comes to my funeral just, and just it's just the legs it? part. <laughs> <laughs> just the, the bottom half. Oh, his pains has got rigor mortis. <laughs> I'll be like, can you just leave me alone for a minute? He was a dear friend. I just want a moment in peace. Uh, uh, yeah, the weapons cache. There's no one in there. You're quite right. Well, the evidence locker. Where's everyone in the building? Like I said, there has been an attack in, in an interview. Yeah, but the entire building. This is a skyscraper. It's not like it's a one-story police, like, sheriff's office, like you get in the first turn area when he shoots the place up. Mm. It's like a giant... It's like, almost like the police headquarters for San Francisco. Oh, uh, there are some people. Yeah, but they go in far too late. Think about how long ago that happened. So the police... Oh, here he is, Mr. Lazy Eye. Um, a, a load of police go back into the room where uh, John, who we once thought was the Asian uh, police lady who then was thrust into the side and then her face went, went back to John Connor. Um, that was probably about half an hour ago. The police have just walked in now and they're like, oh my God, find them. Um, and then, oh yeah, so Arnie's looking at the uh, ammunition and he says, oh, this is a liquefied... Magnetic. Me, a liquefied ma magnetic gun shell. Is that bullshit or not? Are they real? <laughs> bullshit or not? Is that an actual thing? Spalding, where are you, man? I have so many gun-related and ammunition-related questions and just no one to answer them. Oh, okay. So is that it a finished, I typed in liquefied mag and Google finished uh, the sentence for me, basically. Yes, finished they're up. called uh, neodium. Say that for me, Ali. Uh, neodium. No. Neodymium. Neodymium. Right. Cool. Magnets. Shot from a gun. 
Ooh. So what happens? There's a video What there. happens when we put a large cluster of strong magnets in a shotgun and shoot it? See what happens when we shoot the magnetic buckshot. <laughs> Just makes me think of Buck Angel. Well, no, because Arnold's one was liquid, wasn't it? Yeah, a liquid. Uh, okay. So these may not be the ones we're actually looking for. I just wanted to know if that was actually real. <coughs> I'm assuming they are real, but uh, I've, I'm going to put a link to this under the actual show notes if you are listening along while we just, so, sorry, Google stuff. Uh, it is the best way to listen to podcasts of people just Googling shit. Uh, yes, liquid solids. Door blasting goes high tech. Uh, would you like to read that for us, Ellie? Uh, which bit? All of it. Smashing down doors. Jesus Christ. S smashing down doors. Can you move your notes, please? I can't read the whole thing. Notes on a scandal. There we go. Boom. Wait. Uh, smashing down doors might seem like a pretty low-tech job, requiring little more than brute force and attitude. Uh, but in reality, there is a lot more to it than that. Uh, experience in Iraq and Afghanistan is resulting in some new and sophisticated door blasters with magnetic bullets, liquid solids, Ethan, and other exotic <laughs> technologies being deployed. <laughs> Today, the army's preferred I've method... I've not shit the bed for at least... Two days. All right, it was two days ago, all right. <laughs> Today, the... I tell you, I tell you far too much about my life. Oh, my God, the things they know about me. I really hope I never meet any of these. Just get on with your weapons talk. Oh, give it to the spastics then. Um, today, the army's preferred method for breaking down doors is a 12-gauge shotgun loaded with the buckshot or slugs as the army's field manual or urban contact skill notes... But there's a big drawback to that method, collateral damage. Uh, not just to the people on the other side of the door, but because of spatter from shot ricocheting uh, yeah, back into the breaching team. This hazard left, uh, led to demands... Oh, fucking ads. We've had an ad blocker. That was boring anyway. So <coughs> basically, it's, it's true, and it's something that they're kind of developing. I wonder if it was the case when this film was made, though. What was it made? 2015? 2015, this actual article we're reading now is actually from 2009, so... Uh, oh, wow. So they they'd obviously developed it by the time that this film came out. This ordinance has been kind of around and available to people uh, for quite some time. Uh, so, yeah, moving on, that is actually the real thing. The thing I want to draw everyone's attention to is the thing, the bit I did. Uh, the breacher, uh, which essentially is something that uh, knocks down doors because my internet stinks. That link doesn't actually work. Uh, but the thing we see actually in the film is uh, a thing called the breacher. It's just like uh, the base of a rocket and the end is a very focused, almost like needle-like thing. And it essentially, that like focal point of force just blows doors off their hinges from, uh, from a long way away. I have unquenchable thirst this evening, I don't know why. <sighs> um, For knowledge. <laughs> knowledge um so arnold also then says yeah i've been reading up about it on this website ammo.com or guns and ammo .com. why would arnie have to read up on a website surely he would just have that in his no you'd be pre-programmed with a certain amount of stuff but or anything he kind of learned after would, that would point. they not have almost like internal internet though i don't know why i just pointed at your head <laughs> no they wouldn't have internal internet where would he have got a com how would he i'd probably say no would because a terminator know how to use a computer yeah. And go onto the internet? If it's not something it's ever done before? Do you reckon he went well, into a library? As you see in the first <laughs> Terminator film, he kind of either reads something and then learns how to do it that way, or... It's like you with YouTube. He looks at stuff like when he looks at the... What is it? The... God. The gearbox and the kind of like the configuration of how the truck's driven. And then he like uses the truck in the first Terminator. It kind of like zooms in and it looks through it. It gives a schematic of like, is, I guess they got files on a lot of things that are around at the time, like a database, which allows them to kind of like go, oh, it's this, like this is how I use it. But um, I think this kind of pops person, though he's been here for 30 years, is like an experiential learner. So he'd be kind of on all these various like militia websites, guns and ammo, reading magazines and stuff, trying to learn as much as he could to become a better uh, protector of Sir Connor. Sir Connor. One thing I'll bring up though, when he actually does... I wonder does... if he's been on uh, our website and checked out all the amazing pictures that you've <coughs> got on there. Yeah. Because a fictitious uh, person checking out our website is probably more people than real people that have checked it Shut out. Shut up! <laughs> when he walks in, he goes, nice to see you again. Again, they've redone this line. I feel like they're trying to create a catchphrase here. Yeah, it's not It's not picking up. I'm sorry. Actually, there's a weird thing. There's a bit with Arnie when he's driving around Venice Beach going, I built this wall with Franco Colombo. this city... And it's such a weird moment because he's like turning the corner, he's going towards Gold's gym and he kind of like runs, w drives past the lady and she waves at him and he goes, hello darling. Such a, like an odd thing to say for like an American or Austrian to say. 
You wouldn't think that's a word people say, is it? Hey, darling. Hello, I, s- darling. I say darling quite a lot. It just sounds odd coming out of his mouth. I'll try and find the... It uh, does, but it is a word I like to use. <laughs> I do like to say darling. I, no, I, I call you darling sometimes. No, it's more of an English thing, isn't it? But just yeah, coming definitely. out of Arnie's mouth, it just seems really... I'm darling. Yeah. The cringiest thing I've ever seen was watching him like hit on that chick in like, Barcelona that was the or best Mexico. Thing. I've oh come my. to learn the language. Oh, the language is so sexy. Oh. What is it? Oh, it's so bad. And you see him on the dance floor just like grabbing this chick's ass and she's like almost like getting it, like trying to move his hand away. I still can't find that. We discussed this a million times on the film. <laughs> so funny. We used to have a show in England called The Big Breakfast. Oh my God, yeah, with Denise Van Outen. And when uh, is Ellie's... She a, is she a goer? Nah, no, no like to. I always preferred Kelly, but bit, bit she's not a goer. Kelly who? The one that's kind of lost it now. Brooke. Kelly Brooke. Oh no. What is it with you and pigs? <laughs> Ellie, someday she's just got to go hugging. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, she used to have great tits, but now... I think I'm just changing as a man as I go through life. I used to date literally, well... Sticks. Supermodels. And now, if a girl's a bit rough around... Okay, okay, okay. They're models, Ethan. You've never dated a supermodel. I know. Uh, There's only one model, and you haven't even It's for dramatic. It's for dramatic effect. There is one model. I'm not going to mention her name, and I've seen her on a couple of ads. EW was an 11 out of 10. Yeah, but she's not she's not a supermodel, Ethan. Uh Yeah, you've literally been with SLA some... was an eleven out of ten. You're mm. biased now because we know she's a douche, but No, an eleven out of ten has to have the whole package. Oh, okay, tits fair enough. Laugh, <gasps> Ellie. You've told me that. If you, I know she listens to the if show. If you could Hello, combine if you could combine S M We're getting off topic though. Sorry. The point is, I think now my tastes are changing. I think if a girl's a little bit rough around the edges, like you had, we had the works do for the event company. Oh, and there were these those two cheerleaders, cheerleaders with came. The tits. And I, when they came in, I was like, "Oh, they're really hot babes." And I gave them a, a closer look, and I was like, "Oh God, they're actually not. They're just a bit kind of like Trashy. the brown side of ripe." <laughs> and they just were kind of a bit out of shape and not that great. But that made me want them more. I was like, "Oh my God." I think at the twilight of my youth. Uh, yeah, I think you're changing because you're getting older. Okay. But does that mean you're now looking for a woman that's going to bear children? No, Because that's no. kind of the look that... No, I have subscribed to the magazine, rip off the crust and scoop out the jelly, though. So they're, they're like quite mature, the ladies in that magazine. Do they have puffy nipples? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> it's a lot of jelly. Um... We then back to the film. We then uh, see our <laughs> back to the film. <laughs> we then see our musketeers. They've gone to the roof. They're at the helicopter pad once again. They're walking onto the helicopter pad. There's two helicopters there. They have got arms loaded with booty. No police. No surveillance. No cameras. Well, no you could one, argue they're no working. Looking... Their, their, well, you could argue when all the stuff kicked off in the interview room. All the cops cleared out on the alarm that didn't go off in the scenes that we've got so far. So I'm, I'm helping the filmmaker by suggesting that. You're such a Terminator sympathiser, aren't you? They got more people and then they went... We are recording, aren't we? Yes, they went floor by floor, <laughs> securing and like making sure every floor was safe. And they're trying to get to the roof, basically. Basically. Ow. The roof scene does is reminiscent slightly of uh, the 1978 Superman. When he stops the helicopter it falling, is. he goes, who are you? And he goes, a friend. And he just flies away. Do you know what else it makes me think of? In How win- bad in- Superman Winter versus Soldier Batman when was. Um, Captain America is holding on to the plane. He does. And then he goes, <laughs> And then, uh, well, the one thing wrong with that film, like the sentimentality of Captain you America. You weren't in it? He's holding on to this or that, or he's stopping this from happening. He looks at Buck and he goes, oh, Buck. And then he, there's some weird. I'm back at Buck Angel. No, Bucky. I know. Bucky Barnes. Bucky O'Hare. That's a different character. <laughs> but he always goes, no. And that's how he drops the helicopter. Oh, no. He looks at him and then he kind of turns it and he kills him in the. Uh... Oh, I'm going to stop talking. You yeah. get the idea. We get the idea. This is like Superman, 1978. <laughs> Moving on. Um, we then uh, see John Connor uh, blast out of the door. He's walking towards them. He's shooting them. Arnold uses himself as a human shield. What I don't know is why um, John Connor is shooting at Arnie and yet not actually shooting at the propellers, Kyle, or Sarah. If he shot at the propellers or Kyle, that would take the whole that would take the whole um, Ellie. helicopter out. <laughs> you gonna? 
you're gonna have to stop being on this show because you're literally pointing out everything that's wrong with this film. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're absolutely right. He could have put a bullet right through Joy Courtney's head, killed Sarah, shot the razor blade off the back of the helicopter, like disabling. And then it. him and John, uh, him and uh, Pops could have just tossed each other. Just duked it out on the top. Yeah. Uh, I have a fact attack for you. Fact attack. Now that sounded like an angry what bobcat. Meow. Wow. Anyway, uh, yes. Uh, while looking at the weapons, Chief O'Brien. Sorry, O'Brien. Chief O'Brien's from Batman the TV series. Uh, J.K. Simmons' character. He tells the T-800. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you didn't know already, uh, that the rocket he's holding he is a new breacher rocket. Schwarzenegger, of course, bla played Blade. Uh, played John Breacher, uh, Wharton, in the action film Sabotage in 2014, which Ellie still hasn't seen. No. Not his most flattering haircut. Pretty <laughs> good film. Uh, fact attacked, number two. Fact attack. Two. <laughs> Approximately 90% of the sequences that take place at night in this film. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I had to turn the page. Uh, the first 50 plus minutes of the movie take place during the night. Did you know that? I did not. Are you impressed? I am not. <laughs> Excellent. Moving on. Sorry. Uh, uh, this is the section of the show where we go completely off to topic again because we haven't done that so far. And Ellie's going to try this no, lovely Ethan, juice. No, Ethan, please. No. Ethan, no. All right. Yeah, it looks it. Ethan, it looks like the bog of eternal stench. Please, no. Try it. Let's not ruin Christmas. You'll get good skin. Tomorrow. Come on. I'll do it tomorrow. Just not now. Dude, please. You look like a gunshot victim. Oh, God, I can smell it. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, <laughs> Ellie, if you got anything more you want to add? Yeah, one more point. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so as John is shooting um, at Arnie, yeah. and Arnie's kind of using himself as a human shield, Yeah. and Arnie is shooting back at him but just yeah. with normal bullets yeah. why not use these uh, liquid magnetic bullets that he's just discovered that would actually cause John damage I think you are to, well again you've pointed out I just didn't think about they mention it but then it's never mentioned again and he's got a special gun <coughs> that's like a magnetic field disruptor well, yeah the thing he is shooting at John I'm assuming because it's a shotgun are those liquid magnetic bullets uh, one thing I was going to mention, uh, Spaldner's not here to uh, call in for this, but he's shooting a shotgun. I think John Connor, Jason Clark's character, is uh, shooting a, a, a gun called a Steyr Org, which is the gun that Carl has in uh, the first Die Hard. I might be wrong because the uh, clip cuts at that point, but it's got like a forward-facing trigger handle halfway down the barrel. So it looks very much like the Steyr Org, which is the gun that the blonde-haired friend of Alan Rickman Whose brother Alan is killed? Alan Rickman. He's made awesome He died music. this year as well. Did he? Alan Rickman, the actor, the sheriff oh, of no, Nottingham, I'm, I'm Hans of Gruber. I'm thinking of someone else. Yeah, no, I know who Alan yeah, Rickman yeah. is. I'm thinking of, of a different Rickman. That's the one that made weird music. That's all I got. Um, well, they're all my notes, Ethan. Uh, yes. Well, we hope you enjoyed the show, uh, listeners. If you want to actually follow along the clip oh, we're I did. talking did about, did you enjoy it? Yeah, I had a great time. Good. Awesome. We kind of went. Not very Terminator, but we do those occasionally. Hey, I brought out some really great points in this episode. You You're did. the one. I know. <laughs> we, we, we crossed the line. <laughs> but I loved it. Uh, <laughs> we'll, of course, return tomorrow on, hopefully, New Year's Eve. I think tomorrow we shouldn't do a Terminator show. We do Babe, like... tomorrow is not New Year's Eve. It's the 30th. New Year's Eve is the 31st. Okay. <laughs> but we should do an end of year review. Any films we saw, anything that happened in the year. We'll talk about the celebrity death list. <gasps> That's what we should do. We should comprise a list of all the celebs that died. Don't need to comprise a list. Died. There's one on IMDb. Just type in celebrity death list. Okay. Uh, and then we can and then we can decide <clears throat> which was the most rock and roll death. We'll dance around. We'll have some fun. Well, probably Debbie Reynolds. <gasps> Dude, I'm excited. If there is an afterlife, Carrie Fisher like, oh, okay now. All right, well, it was sh bad that I died, I guess. Not going to finish Star Wars Episode 9, but, yeah, but at least I'm rid of my mother. But at least she and can make... And then she turns around and the elevator goes, ding, and the door's open. She's like, fuck! No! Hey, smother. <laughs> I mean, me, mother. Help me, everyone. Can I put you on my own? Yeah but, yeah, but at least she can now like make sweet, sweet uh, music with David Bowie. Yeah. 
Even I now am forced to admit it's a very strange year for celebrity deaths. Or is it just the media's played it up and the same amount of people die every year or have that many iconic people died? Well, I saw um, a guy, a big fan of yours, um, Ethan, uh, Eden, had put up this uh, article saying that all these celebrity deaths, the reason that they're highlighting them all now and putting them so prominently in Daily the Bay news was the first of is the year. because it's a smokescreen and we should really be looking at all the other news that's going on in the world at the moment, like China, Russia. There's loads of shit and heat going on about Russia at the moment. Um, so yeah, it could be that. No, but there are a lot of like super know. famous people what going I mean within is, is days there, of each other. There could be, yeah, I don't know. It's all a bit. Who weird. was the start of the year? Because we had David Bowie, then there was someone else, Alan Prince. Rickman, Prince. So we had those three, and then the bookend, sort of. We got one to go if we're going to do a proper trilogy. It's George Michael. I am most Carrie Fisher. Who was it just before George Michael? There was someone else big recently as well. Uh, we'll just look at your list. No, we'll do it on that. We'll do it on episode. that special episode. But uh, basically, I don't really care about any of them apart. <gasps> Ow! I say it once in a blue moon. Oh. I don't get slapped for it. Oh, okay. Is that not? A th- and that was in my eye. Oh, the other eye. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the only deaths I cared about this year were Prince and Bowie. Sorry. You usually want to hit you in the face. I've got spaff on my fingers, so who cares? Uh, thank you all for listening, everyone. If you uh, want to watch a you clip... You say spaff, cl- it's usually my piss. <laughs> oh, I either shit the bed or I wet myself. Look, you're, you're not usually around for that, though. That, m- those are my uh, the small victories <laughs> against myself. <laughs> like the other day when you, when you called me on Skype and you didn't realise the camera was on. I was just there <laughs> picking just, my bum, being you weird. you doing your own thing. And I was just like, Ethan, why are you doing that? And you went... Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It was amazing. The faces you were pulling. I <laughs> want <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be a fly on the wall in Ethan's room. Well, you kind of were then, well, weren't you? I kind of was. <clears throat> but you don't, you don't scare me. That could be anyone's ass. Show the, show the man my pictures. <laughs> that doesn't scare me. That could be anybody's ass. That doesn't ass. scare me, Quimby. That could be anyone's ass. <laughs> uh, Every Scotsman does it. <laughs> my th- hobbyist photograph. No, was it videotaping people in cars? In this country, I call you a pervert, but every single Scottish person does it. Did you get that all out, Ethan? Yeah. Do you feel better now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, where can you find the show, Ethan? You can find us at the Two Minute Terminator <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter. You can find us on Two Minute Terminator on uh, Facebook. Please follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. There's much Leave fun to be had there. Leave a review on iTunes. Leave us a review on iTunes. Tell your friends about it. Invite your friends to like the page on Facebook. Let's get the word out. We've got like... A few shows left before we wrap this up. And if you want to actually follow the clip we're talking about so you can Good. vaguely follow along when we are actually talking about the goddamn clip, you can go to 2-Minute Terminator on YouTube and uh, follow the show yeah, there. There, yeah. there, there, there. Uh, But yeah, thank you for your support. Thank you for listening. Merry Christmas. Pre-happy two days New Year. Yes, and uh, hasta la vista. Baby. <laughs> 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 it's a baby ox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're out of ideas. Shut up, Ethan. He's never good at improv. Cut it. Good night. Watch out for machines.